A senior and close aide to the Russian President Vladimir Putin has warned Donald Trump that he is obliged to fulfill promises he made during his presidential campaign to bring peace to Ukraine. Trump said repeatedly during his campaign to secure his return to the White House that he would put a stop to the more than two and a half years of war in Ukraine within 24 hours. As you know, I get along very well with Putin. I would tell Putin, got to settle. I would tell Zelensky, you got to settle. I would tell one, you're going to load up with money. I'd tell the other, you're not going to get any money. I would get a settlement in 24 hours. Well, Cold War warrior Nikolai Patrushev, part of the Russian president's inner circle and former secretary of the Security Council, said to a Russian newspaper that Trump was duty-bound to act on his words. Petrushev said to achieve success in the elections, Donald Trump relied on certain forces to which he has corresponding obligations, and as a responsible person, he will be obliged to fulfil them. During the pre-election period, he made many statements to attract voters to his side, who ultimately voted against the destructive foreign and domestic policies pursued by the current US presidential administration. But the election campaign is over, and in January, it will be time for the specific actions of the elected president. It is known that election promises in the United States can often diverge from subsequent actions, Petrushev said. He was answering a question about whether the new U.S. administration amounted to positive changes from Russia's point of view. Petrushev is considered one of the key drivers of Putin's full-scale invasion of Ukraine and served as Secretary of Russia's Security Council before being moved to the position of Putin aide. He's also chairman of Russia's Maritime Board. Since the first year of the war, Ukrainian leaders have lobbied Western allies to allow them to use advanced weapons to strike key targets inside Russia, which they hope would erode Moscow's capabilities before its troops reach the front line and could make it more difficult for the Russian forces to strike sovereign Ukrainian territory. It could also serve as a deterrent force in the event of future ceasefire negotiations. The US has long opposed the move, with President Joe Biden determined to avoid any escalation that he felt could draw the US and other NATO members into direct conflict with nuclear-armed Russia. The Kremlin warned on Monday that the decision adds fuel to the fire. The decision comes in the last remaining days of Joe Biden's presidency before Trump assumes office. Trump has said he would bring about a swift end to the war, which many fear could force unpalatable concessions from Kiev, such as giving away large swathes of Ukrainian land to the Russian president. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, I will have the disastrous war between Russia and Ukraine settled. Ukraine has been asking its Western allies for longer-range weapons in order to alter the balance of power in a war where Russia is better resourced and strike the precision air bases, supply depots and communication centres hundreds of miles over the border. It hopes the weapons would help blunt Russia's air power and weaken supply lines, that it needs to launch daily strikes against Ukraine and to sustain its military ground offensive into Ukraine, which has now changed significantly since North Korea have supplied up to 10,000 ground troops to potentially die for the Russian Federation. In lieu of Western weapons, Ukraine has been regularly striking Russia with domestically produced weapons, with some capable of travelling up to 620 miles, but still lack sufficient quantities to do serious long-term harm. Ukrainian leaders have been cautious about this announcement from the US, and the senior US defence and military leaders have persistently argued that it won't be a game-changer. They've also noted that Russia has moved many key assets out of range. The effect of the decision depends on the rules set for the weapons use. If strikes are allowed across all of Russia, they could significantly complicate Moscow's ability to respond to battlefield demands. Vladimir Putin today formally lowered the threshold for Russia's use of its nuclear weapons, a move that follows the announcement to let Ukraine strike targets inside 
Russian territory with American-supplied longer-range missiles. The new doctrine allows for a potential nuclear response by Moscow even to a conventional attack on Russia by any nation that is supported by a nuclear power. While the doctrine envisions a possible nuclear response by Russia to such a conventional strike, it's formulated broadly to avoid a firm commitment to use nuclear weapons and keep Putin's options open. And you're going to have World War III, by the way. You're going to have World War III. If something doesn't happen fast, you're going to have World War III. The approval of this document demonstrates Putin's readiness to tap his nuclear arsenal to force the West to back down as Moscow presses a slow-moving offensive in Ukraine as the war reaches its 1,000th day. I'm Anthony Davis. You can find me on the 5 Minute News YouTube channel and podcast on Wednesdays co-hosting Uncovered and on Sunday on The Weekend Show with Midas Touch.